Hey guys, I'm out here at Yifki this morning, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan, if you're a first time viewer here. We're just dropping off a couple of our passengers over for our helicopter, which is gonna just jump them down the river to one of our helicopter locations. Anyway, I just picked up a couple of empty fuel drums that he's been using for fuel and stuff. We're heading back to Goroka on about an hour and 10 minute flight. So I don't really have anything else here, so let's get out of here. All right, you out of here? Yeah, we're out of here. Okay, see you later. All right, well, let's get started. Just loading up over there now, igniter's on, fuel pump, low start. Once my ITT drops below my 200 degree ITT mark, then I'll introduce my fuel. There you go. I got just shut down about 15 minutes ago. So let's see what it comes up to. X92, still not even that warm. All right, prop four to get our V2 track turned on lights on and see it because I don't have my camera here today but once our amps start dropping back down we'll throw on our alternator we've got a generator and an alternator as backups on this airplane and auxiliary bus get make sure my air is turned on maximum our fuel cap selectors are done our controls are done we'll turn train awareness system off our switches and instruments I think we're probably just gonna go all the way back at 15,000 today even though I didn't file for that why not? It's a nice day out, so that allows me to go that high. But if there was a lot of clouds, then I deal with icing and everything else, and this plane's just not rated for that. So that's why that's kind of my determining factor if I can actually go up that high or not. We are empty, 5,500 pounds, so not much. Rotate 55, 64 if we had to come back in. Looks like he's just starting now, 55. Laps are set, indicated, and verified at 20. 1370. Moresby 6538, November Tango Kilo. Taxi. November Tango Kilo, Moresby good. November Tango Kilo, Taxi. Yifki, Goroka, 1POE, Copy Company, November Tango Mike. November Tango Kilo, no reserve for traffic. November Tango Kilo. Right, ignition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses 1370 rotate 55 lock my elbow in so it's not bouncing around 1370 all right torque is set the nose wheel up and out of this taller grass there we go air speed's alive we're continuing there's airborne. Reduce the nose. My speed up. ITT up to 740. Because we're empty today, we're just going to do a quick 180 and jump right over top of the mountain right behind me. Just climbing out at my 73 knots. I'd say about now. Let's just do a 180 and keep climbing at 73 knots just so we can get over top of the mountain right behind me. In the turn, I'm just kind of reducing a little bit of the back pressure just because you don't quite have as much lift in a turn. Your speed's just going to drop off. lifting for And November Tanko, kilos in a left hand turn. We'll be just flying right out the valley behind you. All right, igniters, bypass, ignition. All right, I'm seeing more and more on the other side of this ridge over here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lower my nose now, because that's meaning that I'm gonna be actually able to clear it. Once we're over 80, we'll go 10 degrees of flaps. Probably would've been easier to go out that way and then done my climb, that's what I usually do because of these mountains and clouds, but I didn't today. Now I've got to deal with the consequences of just dealing with all the clouds as we go through. All right, well, let's bring our prop back to 2,000 RPM. I guess I'm just going to have to cut out this way anyway. I just can't go IMC right through the clouds um, just because there's more higher mountains behind them. Morsby 6538, November Tango Kilo, departure. November Tango Kilo departed Yifki time 28, tracking 106 on climb, amended 15000. 
Estimating overhead fire gap zero four. November Tango Kilo traffic is OZ556, C27 Spartan aircraft. Uh, mostly for Hagen via double bin. Estimate part T0141 on climb flight of 230. Hagen estimate 0202. November Tango, Kilo copies. All right, let's just fine tune my prop down to 2000 RPM, my ITT up to 720 for a best climb performance, and we'll pitch for about 100 knots, so that way I can throw my autopilot on. Got a restriction right at 100 knots. And looking ahead, I don't even know if 15,000 is gonna work, just because of those clouds right there. I don't think it's gonna get me over it. Oh, actually, I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. Never mind. <laughs> I would have liked to shoot a little bit more on-the-ground content today, but I've still got another flight after I get back to Garoka, so I kind of wanted to get in a hurry. If you guys do like the on-the-ground content and you'd like to see more of that, check out my Patreon page. I've got a lot more on the, especially Yifki. They're building a school there. It's very exciting to see the progress starting to be made now after kind of seeing it you know, in fruition for now for like a year. So anyway, if you guys want to see more of that content, check out the link down below. I think you guys will enjoy it. I'm guessing still it's probably going to be easier just to stay low. Yep, Mosky 15,000, let's do 11,000. It's probably going to be 9,000 for a good portion of it anyway. So it'll be a little bit more interesting anyways other than just 15,000 for you guys. Basically, I need to head that way up this Lagaipe River and following the biggest part of the valley. That's gonna give me my best option to get back where I need to. Um, it, does, it does look like there's a lot of clouds up there and I can't really see around the next corner. I see a bunch of rain starting up on these mountains. I can't see around the corner to see what it's gonna be like for the next portion of my flight. So because I've flown this route so many times, I think I'm just gonna level off at 9,000 I'm already at 10, so let's go on back down to 9,000. Because I just know that once I get around this corner, all the clouds are probably going to drop back down, making it difficult at 11,000 because my minimum safe, if I do want to go through clouds, is at 13,500. Now that we're kind of on our descent back down to 9,000, let's bring our torque on back to 1250 for our cruise, putting a little bit of left hand or left rudder pressure in there while we're doing it. Mars B6538, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Mars you good. November Tango Kilo, now amended 9000 to weather. November Tango Kilo, amended 9000, now there's no reported traffic. November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, when convenient, request an estimate, a beam Hagen. North Beam Hagen, 04 next hour. Number 10 kilo. All right, so my plan of action is basically where all that light area is, that's where I'm planning on flying. I'm flying around this corner right here because you guys can see all of these clouds here, they're kind of coming out. That's the same ridge as this area right here. So all the clouds follow the terrain here in PNG. So if you can remember how the terrain is and know where the valleys are and typically how they work together, then your life flying here is so much easier. Because as I could just fly up to 13 and a half thousand, I could get on my IFR track and just fly that way. Typically, if there's gonna be rain, there's probably gonna be a little bit of icing, even up in those levels. Probably, that's you know, usually more, this would be like 14,000. I mean, I'm at 9,000, I'm at 13 degrees Celsius, so maybe not today. But if you don't know how the terrain is and you don't know your lower options, like that's not always an option just because there's sections further on out here where I remember I had a flight, I don't know, maybe two years ago where I, I opted to go with the IFR route at 14,000 and then I'm stuck up there and I was picking up icing and I couldn't get back down to where if I would have just taken the low route it would have probably been a little bit more work, you know, working through the valleys and around rain and things like that. But then I wouldn't have to be sitting up there worrying about picking up icing with only pedo heats on the plane. So 
if for some reason this whole valley is completely covered in rain, I doubt it will be, then I can go up to my 13,500 and just go through it all. But I think it's probably going to be a little bit easier just to go down the valley and probably go around it. You guys can see from the terrain map, it, it doesn't give you much. I think the ground comes all the way up to 8,000 something through here, and I'm only at 9,000. So there's only a little section right here, but it's pretty tight in that area as well. So if anywhere the weather's going to be building, that's where it's probably going to be building is in that section right there because the clouds are low to the ground. Lordy looking ahead, it just looks like gray rain up there. I'm not going to freak out yet because, I mean, it is such a small area. There still might be an area off to the right-hand side. If worst case, then what I'll do is have to turn back around, come back out this way, climbing up to my 13,500, and then turn back on course. But, yeah, we'll see once we get passed up through these little clouds just right here in front of us. But what I am going to do is hit my IFR route all ready to go. In case that is the case, then I will already have briefed it in my head what, I'm pl what my plan of action is going to be. But yeah, it's basically this exact same direct track, 13,500 feet, and then everything else is the same. All right, I'm not really seeing a definite course of action looking ahead right where I need to go. I really need to go directly through that rain. So, I may be seeing a little bit off over here, some terrain, potentially, underneath those clouds. I might be able to come up here and then cut in back around. Let's try that first, because I am seeing a little bit through the rain, so that means it's probably not very heavy rain. Right, so what I don't want to do, I am seeing just heavy rain all the way through. I can maybe pick out a couple things, is I don't want to go into rain when I'm really low to terrain, because once the rain starts hitting the windscreen, like, you just can't see anything. It's like almost like instant IMC, because you're going a little bit slower, and everything else just makes it very dangerous, really, when you're low to terrain and you're not on a safe route at a specific altitude. I'm just going to continue pressing on ahead because there is some ridges up there that I'm seeing with some light rain. I'm thinking I might be able to come up here and then cut back across. If not, like I said, then I can just go up and go through. The cameras I have on the back, they're Insta360s and with this battery pack, they're not waterproof. So <laughs> if at all possible, I'm going to try to stay out of the rain today. I've already destroyed one of the screens from rain because it's not waterproof, but... Oh well. Other than that, I really like the camera. Alright, there's autopilot off. Well, I'm, still getting, I'm still seeing probably, I don't know, 15 miles ahead of me? Yeah, about 15 miles ahead. 500. And I'm starting to see through there some, like, lower ridges. So there's, I don't think the rain's quite as heavy as I thought originally because I am still seeing probably about, not a good 10 miles, but I'm still seeing the ridges, what looks to be ridges, 10 miles away. 500. Well, the clouds are a little bit higher here, so I'm just going to slowly work my way up just to give myself a little bit more terrain separation as I'm cutting through over there, just because, I mean, the terrain is nearly, let's see, what is it at? Um, yeah, it says it's at 9,300 feet. That's what I'm at, 93. So basically the same level. So I really need to start moving my way up so that I can potentially get through there. Papa Alpha Victor Morphy traffic, OZ556, C27 Patton, Tabu Biel area for Hagen, flight level 230, estimate Hagen on the off. I'm just going to turn my train awareness back on in case I were to go in and an IMC or something like that. I'm not planning on it, but in case I were, it would start yelling at me and give me that one extra layer of protection. It's like an old airstrip down here at one time. I wonder if that's wall bag. All right, yeah, now I'm seeing a little bit more up there. I think once we just get out of this rain in the next two or three miles, then we'll actually, the clarity is just going to like tenfold. All right, well, it looks like, or this is kind of the end of the rain right here. 
should clear up here once we get up to the ridge. OZ five. There we go. Now it's already clearing up. Hop over this ridge. We'll head through this little gap here and then come on up here towards Wapanamunda, around the corner, and then back on up towards the Buyer Gap. All right, so now looking up this 500. valley. Thank you. Looking up this valley, we've got how many miles? We've got probably 20 miles. Looks like there's rain at the end of the valley. I'm basically going to the end and then making a hard left-hand turn out. So I have two options. I can head up this way, which usually works. Or I can go out that way. I think this way will work. Yeah, now looking at it, I can see there's a ridge coming down. And then I see a ridge behind that. So that's giving me an indication. There's a little bit of rain off here to the right and a little bit in the middle. But we can go around that corner. I'm guessing there's probably going to be rain up here around the next corner, because <laughs> there always seems to be. But we'll just work our way up the valley. When you get in these nice, really wide ones like this that are probably, you know, seven to ten miles wide, the chances of there actually being rain in the middle at just 11.50 in the morning, not as high, that's for sure. Now get into three or four o'clock in the afternoon, I, yeah, it could be completely just socked in all the way. November Tango Kilo, Mosby. November Tango Kilo, go ahead. November Tango Kilo, confirm. Copy traffic, OZ556. Hey, firm, and um, his location at this time? Number Tango Kilo, OZ556, left 19,000 on the St. Hagen. Deviating 15 miles, left and right of route. Yeah, November Tango Kilo copies. Remember Tango Kilo, Hagen Q needs 1020, contact Hagen Tower 120 decimal 5 in the buyer. 120 decimal 5 in the buyer, no, Vemper Tango Kilo. When it's weather like this, I actually really enjoy it because it, it makes like getting back to where you're getting to like like way more of a challenge and, and an unknown. Like it used to kind of just like be very stressful because I didn't know the terrain, like I was saying earlier, but after I got like a really good picture of how the terrain works and how the weather works with the terrain. It's actually really fun. It's like this like puzzle that you're gonna like, man, how can I make it work that I can make it back? I can always go up to like my minimum is safe, but to be honest, like that's honestly not as much fun as like working your way down through valleys and figuring it all out. It's way more fun. I can always do that if, if it doesn't work out, but this is, this is a lot more fun. You gotta make your job fun. Otherwise, well, yeah. Eventually, you just go look for something else if it's no longer fun. If you guys are in the market for a nice, good quality pair of sunglasses, glass lenses, metal frames, I've got them in gold and silver. Check out my website. I've also got the traditional aviators as well that are actually polarized. These ones are not, so they don't mess you up with any G1000 screens. And the other ones, they still work, but just maybe not at all angles. Well, we're just going to drop down probably to like 8,500 feet around this corner into the buyer gap, you can see all this red right here. I'm gonna go around the corner. Once I get in around the corner, I get back into another big valley, the Wagi Valley, and it should be clear all the way down there until maybe Chembu area, and that's again where all the valley comes in close, and that's where all the rain typically starts. Hagen Tower, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Hagen Tower, go ahead. November Tango Kilo, buyer gap this time. Currently 8,100 on climb, not above 900,000. Estimating north of beam 06 and Gurumbin 12. Number Tango Kilo QNH 1020, call again Abim. Call again Abim, November Tango Kilo. All right, so here is the the Wagi Valley. Like I was saying, it's just going to be completely wide open. Hagen Tower, November Tango Kilo, north of beam. This time, Karumpin 1-2. Hotel Charlie, my COVID, expect left second after the Kawasaki, Papa Alpha Victor, landing runway 1-2 now. Oh, the whole Wagi Valley is open like I thought. The clouds are a little bit lower than I was expecting, but that's okay. It looks like they're kind of at the 8,500 range, so I'm probably just going to drop just below them down to 8,000. Really need to remain 8,000 to get into the Garoka Valley, though, because the mountains getting into the valley are right around 8,000. November Tango Kilo Garumbin this time. Non-standard 8,000. 
Smitty Garoka 31. November, November Tango Kilo, copy it. At Moresby, November Tango Kilo, uh, broken transmission, say again, please. Let's try them on the number one radio. Moresby, 120 decimal one, November Tango Kilo. Moresby, 659 or 8, November Tango Kilo. Okay. All right. Can't get them on anything today. All right, well, at least they heard where I was. <laughs> Just go along and that's PNG for you. Radios here are not that great. All right, well, we're only about seven minutes out of Garoka now. It's kind of a boring last 25 minutes. This hill right here is Schwabe. It's really nice when you can start picking out mountains that are like 20, 30 miles out so you can visually just fly to them and you know exactly where you are. Just to give you reference, Ibai is just like right over in that area, just a couple miles away. I was just out there yesterday and did a video, so it probably came out maybe before this one, I don't know. But we need around 8,000 um, to get over top of these mountains in here, coming into Garoka. And we will call up Groka Tower just here in a few minutes. We will probably just track for the water boom. The call calls straight ahead. The water boom's over here. And let's actually just continue straight ahead. It's actually probably a little bit better visibility this way. With the light rain and stuff. Especially just because I'm going to be like right at the level just creeping over top of those mountains. I don't need to be flying into rain at just a few hundred feet over the mountain. For some reason, this section right here is always really bumpy. I have no idea why, but this five mile section is always turbulent. Crook Tower, November Tango Kilo. One five miles to the west, 8,000 your circuit. Now 3-3. Three, three. Tango Kilo, Crook Tower, Runway 35 right. Timpy number two, a landing sequence behind here in the hotel, Long Range Helicopter. Uh, from the southwest, 7,000 in descent, Koroka estimate 30 via the Coco. Uh, wind is light and variable, QNH 1018. 10 seconds on a uh, left downwind, report left down. 1018, join uh, and report left down 135 uh, right, copies here in the hotel. No, the ridiculous. Our fuel selectors, brakes are good, our taws, we're just going to turn it off for, or turn it off for a second because we're going to go right over to this hill. Oh, uh, Delta Alpha, hold it shut, uh, one turn right. We're going to be Ready. landing 51, 100 pounds, so 61 Delta, knots. Delta. I'm just going to come in at 70. I'll float a little while, but that's okay. Just coming up over this uh, ridge, I'm going to start hotel, slowing down now. We'll to track for the up the gate west and allow Sierra Delta Alpha to depart. Hey, let's start pulling our power now, just nine miles out, just because I'm going to be going into this. Sure, Delta Alpha helicopter, we'll be tracking uh, for the west, uh, reporting Copter Gate West for your departure. And, uh, uh, number 10 kilo, you have to report left downwind. Uh, one seven right, make a right turn, clear for takeoff. Uh, one seven right, right turn, clear for takeoff. 500. Uh, thanks, Sherry and Delta. Sure, Delta Alpha. Sierra Delta Alpha, November 8 Kilo, just pass through the water book and will remain to the north of your track if you go through the call call. Uh, for that, many thanks, Sierra Delta Alpha. All right, lights and inlets are done. If we have to go around, power up, 20 degrees flaps, pitch for 12 degrees on the attitude indicator, maneuvers required, reset our ICT. Sierra Delta is at Copter Gate West now and will pass behind Sierra Delta Alpha for neutral. If you're a pilot, student pilot, you have your own airplane, or if you just rent airplanes or whatever, or if you're a flight sim and you'd like to pick up one of these, I've got a backlit as well as just the standard one like this one with that is not backlit. For a piston, for like complex piston, multi-engine, like 152s as well, and then as well as one for a turbine. So I've got those on my website if you're interested in picking one up. They just Velcro to the dash, or you can also um, drill a hole in the back and just put a GoPro mount on it and you can mount it other places like underneath here. I've done that before as well, but anyways, just wanted to throw that out for you guys. I found it to be a really handy tool to keep my eyes up and out and cover all my critical items. Be able to bounce around if need be and not have to worry about a paper sheet and missing items, you know, or having your head down. 
Delta Alpha Intercept. Delta Kilo joining left downwind, Upstairs Delta Alpha in sight. Delta Batingo Kilo, copy that, uh, behind Sierra Delta Alpha, runway 35 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 35 right, no, Vipper Tango Kilo. All right, we're shooting for 90 knots here. We're just now at pattern altitude, so it's still a little bit high, kind of entered in a little bit high. We're going to be coming in at 70 knots, so I'm planning on floating for a little bit further than I normally do, just because I'm adding on 9 knots, turning base now. A little high, so let's just go full flaps now. Checklist is complete. It's because you normally turn, <laughs> do flaps at turning final. Doesn't mean that you can't do it early if you have to lose a little bit of altitude. Also helps you slow on down. Now we're going 80 knots, which is what we're looking for for our base. Turning final, 5600. Uh, Sierra Delta Alpha Tower, uh, just be advised, uh most be VHF frequency, HF also down. Uh, 500. Give it a try, if no contact, they remain on this frequency. Uh, copy that, Sierra Delta Alpha. There you go. Morsby's HF is down, and I think it went down on my call. <laughs> right. 400 feet permitted descent now. It's going to increase here in a second because I'm going down. There's 500. There's about 72 knots, a tiny bit faster than I wanted. Just start slowing my power out now, just to start so I don't float quite as far. There we go. At Tower November Tango Kilo. Um, I was actually having problems getting a hold of not only VHF with Moresby, but HF as well. Um, leaving the Hagen area. Oh, I think you kill a COVID dead things. Uh, we just got informed about uh, five minutes ago, so thank you. I was having trouble too in here in the hotel. Here in the hotel, Tower Roger. Well, guys, thanks for joining on that flight. Uh, that was a little bit more exciting just with dealing with weather and going up and down valleys. I love it. I am fueling right back up, heading down to Medang. Looks like it's going to be pretty crummy weather, I think. Getting back in here on my second flight around 2.33 p.m., though. I'd give this video a thumbs up if you guys did enjoy it. I sure do appreciate it. Share it with your friends.